संगम त्यक्वा फलम जैव सत्याग सात्विको मत नेश्य कुशल कर्म कुशले नुषज्यते त्यागी सत्व सामिष्टो मेधावी छिन्न संशय न हि देह भृता शक्यम त्यक्त कर्माण्यशेषत यस्तु कर्म फल त्यागी सत्यागीत्यभिधीयते अनिष्टमिष्ट मिश्रम चिविध कर्मण फल भवत्यागिना प्रेत न तो सन्यासी क्वचि पंचयिता महाबा कारण निबोध मे सांख्ये कृता प्रोक्ता सिद्ध ये सर्वकर्मण अधिष्ठान तथा कर्ता कर्ण पृथक विधम विविधाश्च पृथक चेष्टा दैव चैवात्र पंचम शरीर वनोभिर्यत्म प्रारभते नर न्याय वा विपरीत वा पंचयते तेतव तत्री कर्ता केवल तो य पश्यत्यृत बुद्धि न स पश्य दुर्मति यहांकृत भाव बुद्धि लिप्य हि सोक न हि न निबध्य ज्ञान ज्ञेय परज्ञाता त्रिविधा कर्म चोदना कर्ण कर्म कर्ते त्रिविध कर्म संग्रह ज्ञानम कर्म च कर्ता चिधव गुण भेद प्रोच्य गुण संख्या यथा वक्षुणुता सर्वूतेषु ये नैक भावीक्षते अभक्त विभक्तु तज्ञान विधि सात्क पृथक् नाना भावान्थक विधान वेति सर्वेशु भूतेशु तज्ञान विधि यत्कृत्स्वेकस्तमुक अतवदल चमस मुदाहृत नियत संगरहित अरागत अफल प्रेसुना कर्म यक मुच्य यु कामेत्सुना कर्म साहंकारेण वुन क्रीये बहुलायासम तुदाहृत Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Archana Maharaj. Krishna Guru Rev, please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. 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 चक्षुर्मीतने तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्णपृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमाते भक्तिदंतावामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वतीदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषन्यवारी पश्चाचारिणे पंचकौपातरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पथितना भवानेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गधाधार श्रीवासदे गोर्भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे 
So today we're going to complete the Bhagavad Gita. We're on the second part of the 18th chapter. So as we said previously, the, the, the Bhagavad Gita is actually already completed at the end of the 17th chapter. But Krishna is summarizing everything he's spoken now in this final chapter. So uh, Arjuna was, uh, Lord Krishna was explaining about the he explained about karma yoga and the importance of working. It's better to work than not to work. Mm. So we're going to hear about the Varnashram system. Go ahead. Yeah. Varnashram system. This is a division of society into four different occupational duties. Right. There's, a, there's the intellectual class who are like the brahmanas and they're like the head in the body. And then there's the Kshatriyas who are like the arms in the body. They're the administrative class of people. And then we have the Vaishya who are the business class of people and they're like the belly. And then the Sudra are the laborer or worker and they're like the legs. So together, the four different occupations make up the body, the social body. And when people follow their duties, when they act according to their duties, then they get purified. And we explained that their occupation is determined by their nature, by their their their, their qualities and their type of work which they they do. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so here we see the different occupations. You can see on the left, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra. So the qualities of the different people are described by Krishna. For the Brahmana, there's nine qualities. Uh, so the Brahmana, he's supposed to be in the mode of goodness. He's the head. So he has to guide the body. He must be situated in the mode of goodness. So the one who is a Brahmana, he should have these kind of qualities. He should be peaceful, self-controlled, austere. 
ควรที่จะมีคุณสมบัติก็คือมีความสมถะควบคุมตนเองได้บริสุทธิ์ It has to be very clean. It has to be truthful. เราต้องสะอาดมีสัจจะ And it has to be tolerant also. And he should have knowledge, and he should have wisdom and religiousness. So I said, anybody can be trained as a brahmana if they they have to be. Anybody can become a brahmana if they're properly initiated by a spiritual master and then trained by him. Then they can become brahmanas. The problem is not everybody wants to be trained by a spiritual teacher. When one of the one of a devotee went to England many years ago, one devotee went to England to preach about Krishna consciousness, and he was asked, "What do I need to do to become a brahmana?" There was one big Englishman, rich Englishman, he wanted to be a brahmana. He said, "What do I need to do to be a brahmana?" So the man told him, "You have." The devotee told him, "You have to follow four regulated principles: no meat, fish, and egg; no intoxication; no gambling; no illicit sex." One time, the American, one person, the foreign one, he wanted to be a Brahmana. He said, "Oh, if I want to be a Brahmana, I have to do what?" Then the person who was with him said, "Oh, if I want to be a Brahmana, I have to do what?" Then the person who was with him said, "Oh, if I want to be a Brahmana, I have to do what?" การรับประทานเนื้อสัตว์ไข่บาดทุกชนิดไม่เสพสิ่งเสพติดไม่เล่นการพนันแล้วก็ไม่มั่วสุนทางเพศสัมพันธ์ This was in England, not in America. อังกฤษนะคะในที่อังกฤษ So it happened when he said the four principles, then the man said, the Englishman said, oh, that's impossible. I cannot do that. หลังจากที่ชายหนุ่มชาวอังกฤษได้ยินเช่นนี้นะคะเขาบอกว่าโอ้เป็นไปไม่ได้แล้วฉันทำไม่ได้ So although anybody come can become a Brahmana, not everyone is willing to accept the principles of a Brahmana. คือแม้ว่าบุคคลเนี่ยจะสามารถเป็น Brahmana ได้แต่ว่าไม่ใช่ว่าทุกคนเนี่ยยอมที่จะปฏิบัติตามกฎของกฎหรือว่าคุณสมบัติของ Brahmana. Right. And then the Shatriya. There are seven qualities for the Shatriya. Shatriyas are in the mode of passion, so they have to be very powerful. They have to be very. They have to be very brave and willing to fight in battle. แล้วก็ขเชตริยะเนี่ยคือคุณสมบัติของเขาก็คือเขาเนี่ยจะอยู่ในระดับปัญหาเน็ตหนึ่งนะก็คือในแบบที่ว่ามีความกล้าหาญมีความที่จะทะเยอทะยานในการต่อสู้มีความแข็งแกร่ง And then the Vaishya, their duty is to do business, and they would also do farming and cow protection. แล้วก็ในระดับวันนักของวิชาเนี่ยหรือพ่อค้าวานินเนี่ยก็คือเขาก็จะทำในเรื่องของการทำธุรกิจดูแลวัวหรือว่าทำไร่ทำนาทำสวน So the Vaishya is in the mode of passion and ignorance, mixed passion and ignorance. วิชาเนี่ยก็จะอยู่ในระดับผสมระหว่างตัณหากับปวิชา In other words, Vaishyas are usually they're quite simple people. They, you know, they. They're 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 simple in their living and simple in their behavior. They don't have much education, but they work. They will do this farming and take care of the cows, and they will do business. แล้วก็เ
เขาก็เป็นค่าเวอร์ชันเนี่ยก็จะเป็นเบอร์เรียบง่ายนะคะในวันนั้นที่แบบว่าเราจะไม่ได้อะไรมากเขาก็แค่จะทําส่วนทําเกษตรกรไปแล้วก็ทําธุรกิจไป And then the sudras, they they just work for other people, and they're so they're in the mode of ignorance. See, they're told what to do. They don't have the intelligence to think what to do themselves. They get told what to do by others. So usually when Krish, when when Lord Rama came, Lord Rama came in the family of the Shatriyas as a great king, and similarly when Krishna came as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, he's also coming in the Shatriya family. ตอนนี้คริสต์นาทรงอวตารมาในในรูปของพระรามเนี่ยท่านก็มาในในวันนักเชตริยานะคะเช่นเดียวกันตอนนี้คริสต์นาอวตารลงมาเป็นรูปของวาสุเดชกับเดวกีเนี่ยท่านก็มาในวันนักเชตริยาเช่นกันวันนักษัตริย์ because they're these the Shatriyas they're like the kings they're like the leaders and they they show people what to do they teach them by their example But we saw Lord Krishna also came as the son of Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda, and they're cow, they're vicious because Krishna likes the cows very much. So Krishna came in the family of the cowherd people in Vrindavan. And แล้วว่าคุณแม่จะโชดากันนันดมาราชเนี่ยพวกท่านเนี่ยก็เหมือนกับจะจะทำในส่วนของการดูแลวัวอะไรอย่างนี้แล้วแล้วกระชันเนี่ยก็ชอบวัวมากมากกระชันก็เลยไปอยู่กับพวกท่านโอเคก็เหตุโอเค text forty eight every endeavor is covered by some fault just as fire is covered by smoke Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature or son of Kunti, even if such work is full of fault. Of fault, yeah. Ah, สรุปที่สี่สิบแปดนะบอกว่าความพยายามทุกครั้งจะถูกปกคลุมด้วยความผิดพลาดบางอย่างเหมือนกับไฟที่ถูกควันปกคลุมดังนั้นจึงไม่ควรยกเลิกงานที่เกิดจากธรรมชาติของตนเองโอ้โอรสพระนางคุณจีถึงแม้งานนี้จะเต็มไปด้วยความผิดพลาด Just like one may be a brahmana but he may have to do a sacrifice he may have to kill the animal it may be an animal sacrifice he's doing so the brahmana sometimes has to do that kind of thing มันแต่กับการที่เป็นบรามนะหรือเป็นพรามเนี่ยในบางครั้งเนี่ยในพิธีในวิธีกรรมวิธีบูชาเนี่ยเขาจะต้องมีการฆ่าสัตว์และเพื่อเป็นการถวายแต่เขาก็ต้องทำสิ่งนั้นเพราะมันเป็นหนึ่งในหน้าที่ของเขา An Ashatriya sometimes he will fight with people and he will may even kill people และก็ Ashatriya เนี่ยก็จะทำสงครามต่อสู้กับผู้คนซึ่งในการทำสงครามนั้นเขาจะต้องมีการฆ่าคนด้วยสัตว์ And one may be a Vaishya. Even the Vaishya sometimes he does things, doing business. So he will say, "For you, I'm making no profit." But we know he's making profit. It's not true. So Arjuna was thinking, you know, he didn't want to fight because he thought there's some. I'll do some, you know. I'm going to have to kill people, but but Krishna said, "Well, everything you do, there's some fault in it." And Krishna gives the example here, just like fire, there will be smoke. And so that nobody wants smoke. The smoke is no good, but we want the fire. But you have to put up with the smoke as well in the beginning. 
หมือนกันกับการจุดไฟเลยการจุดก่อทำกองไฟเนี่ยเราจะรู้เลยว่าตอนแรกเนี่ยก่อนที่ไฟจะมามันจะมีมันจะมีควันที่ออกมาเยอะมากซึ่งความจริงแล้วไม่มีใครต้องการควันนั้นทุกคนต้องการไฟแต่ควันมันก็จะมาอยู่แล้ว So Krishna is encouraging Arjuna, don't give up your work. You should fight. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So now Krishna is describing the different qualities of one who is on the the transcendental platform, the Brahma Buddha platform. Mm. Right? Because we want to become detached from the material situation, so you have to you have to control the mind. So Krishna is describing different things which we can do, which will help us to come to this higher stage of yoga, the Brahma Bhuta, knowing that we're not the body, knowing that we're souls. He said, Krishna said we should do things like live in a secluded place. Live away from all the people, you know. Live in a quiet place, away from all the noisy people. And we should not eat too much. We should eat little. And control the mind, and we should be careful what we speak, what we say to people. We should be free of things like lust and anger and greed. And we should be peaceful. This is it. This is the coming to the, when you want to come to the position of self-realization to understand you're not the body, to know you're a soul. Then you should have these kind of qualities. Go ahead. All right, text fifty four. Salam This is a, a famous verse. This is describing the position of coming to the platform of Brahman. In the beginning of bhakti. So mentioned here that one who understands he's the Brahman, then he will be happy, he will be joyful. Not that we are the, we don't think we are the, the Supreme Brahman, but we know we are a tiny part of the Brahman. So it become, become the, you experience the nature of the soul. The nature of the soul is very joyful, very blissful. So, 
So in that condition we never lament, we don't lament about anything that, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, I, I didn't do this, I should have done that. You know, sometimes we feel, we lament, I, I did the wrong thing. And we don't desire to have anything also. You know, I want, people have many desires, I want a new phone, I want a new handphone, I want a new computer, I want a new car, I want a new house. Why do it? <laughs> But one who is on the Brahman, he, he doesn't worry about that. He's not worried about these things. He's happy he, and he, see, he sees all different living entities equally. So he can begin devotional service, he can do pure devotional service. So this is, in this way Krishna explains Brahman, knowledge of Brahman. Go ahead. Hmm. Okay, so this, this is not Bhagavad Gita, this is a verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. But it's a well known verse and it describes about how we get devotional service. It says when we're, when we're very fortunate, then we get the opportunity to associate with a spiritual teacher. And by the mercy of the spiritual teacher, we get the mercy of Krishna. And with the mercy of Krishna, we get the seed of devotion. So the seed of devotion is planted in our heart and then we have to water it, we have to learn how to take care of it so that we can develop our Krishna consciousness. Okay, go ahead. Alright, 1855, text number 55. One can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of me, by such devotion, he can enter into the Kingdom of God. So Lord Krishna is saying there's only one way in which we can understand him and that is by devotion. We cannot understand Krishna just by doing karma or just by knowledge or just by doing meditation. We have to, un we can only understand Krishna, we can only come to know Krishna by devotion. We cannot understand Krishna by devotion. 
กรรมดีหรือว่าจากการทําสิ่งอื่นๆแต่ว่าเราเนี่ยจะสามารถเข้าใจพระองค์ได้ก็ด้วยการปฏิบัติการวิจารณ์เสียสารับใช้ต่อพระองค์เท่านั้น And when we develop that devotion to Krishna, then we become qualified to go back to Godhead. So only devotees get to go back to Godhead. The karmi and the yogi and the jnani, they don't get to go back to Godhead. But one who is a devotee, who has bhakti, then is very dear to Lord Krishna. Ah, who is a devotee, Okay, go ahead. All right. So here we can see people understand Krishna in different ways. Not everybody thinks of Krishna as we think of Krishna. We see on the bottom. Some people think Krishna is just some character, in uh, like in, in people write books. You know, the one lady wrote books about Harry Potter, so they think Lord Krishna is somebody like Harry Potter or like Superman or something like that. They think it's just it's just it's not true. They think it's just uh, just a story. It's just somebody with a, an imagination who made up this person, Krishna. บอกว่าบางคนเนี่ยคือเขาจะคิดว่าคริชนาเนี่ยก็เปรียบเสมือนกับนักเขียนที่เขาเนี่ยเขียนเรื่องของแฮร์รี่พอตเตอร์ขึ้นมาหรือว่าเกี่ยวกับซูเปอร์แมนหรือว่าแมนที่ทำภารกิจพิเศษได้ต่างๆบางคนคิดว่าคริชนาเป็นเช่นนั้น We tell people well look we know where Krishna was born we go to Krishna's birthplace We see the birthplace of Krishna, and we know the village where Krishna grew up. We have a lot of proof about Krishna. And we know also, Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. We're reading that book. So, Harry Potter, he he may they may write nice stories about Harry Potter, but they they don't write they don't write anything like the Bhagavad Gita. They can't give you enlightenment. So we say Lord Krishna is not imagination. Lord Krishna is real. And we all have a relationship with him, and we can experience that relationship. Then there are other people. They think, well, Krishna, he's just a politician. He's just like some uh, ruler or something like a king or something like that. He wasn't really God. And the Bhagavad Gita, that's just politics. It's just Krishna as a statesman. He's just speaking, you know. He's talking about you know, the government and about the one king. He didn't like one king, and he wants Pandavas to be the king. He didn't want Duryodhan to be the king. 
This is all just uh, politics and he's a just diplomat, he's a statesman. He's not God. And then there are other people, they say, no, Krishna is just some social reformer. He did some things to, you know, try to reform the society. He, he did things like he married those 16,100 queens who were all taken prisoners by Narakasura and he killed the Narakasura and he freed all the queens and they had nowhere to go. And so they had nowhere to go because he, they'd all been touched by Narakasura, so nobody wanted them. So Krishna married all of them and took them all for his wives. And Krishna did things like uh, Sudama, he, the Sudama Brahman, Lord Krishna was very, he was, Sudama was very poor, but Lord Krishna showed how to take care of the Brahmanas and how to wash their feet and how to worship the Brahmanas. And he took care of so many cows, he was very concerned about the cows and protecting the cows when he was with Nanda Maharaj in the home of Nanda Maharaj every day take care of the cows so that was a good example for for society so in this way krishna is just a social worker he wasn't god and then other people say, no, Krishna is the impersonal Brahman. He's just the form of the impersonal Brahman. He came in this world, but he's not, he's not the supreme Bhagwan. He's not, he's not the original personality of Godhead. He's only the form of the Brahman, and ultimately it's, it's the Brahman which is God, and we're all parts of the Brahman, it's all one. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, he is the basis of the Brahman. The Brahman comes from Krishna. It's not that Krishna comes from the Brahman, it's the Brahman which comes from Krishna. And so these people, they, they try to say the Brahman, and they say it's all the Brahman and the Krishna comes from the Brahman, it's all wrong. And then there are other people, they say, well, Krishna is not the Supreme, it's Vishnu who is the Supreme, and Krishna is just an avatar of Vishnu. But we don't, we say, no, actually, Krishna is the source of all the avatars, and Vishnu also comes from Krishna. And 
And it's Lord Krishna who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's above everyone. Okay, go ahead. Okay, here's a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam which says very clearly that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In, in the third chapter of the first canto of the Bhagavatam, it's described there about the, the different avatars. There's many different avatars all described. And then it's mentioned that, that that Lord Krishna is the original, he's the source of all the avatars. They all come from him. And Vishnu also comes from him. Okay, go ahead. How to understand Krishna in truth? So if you want to understand Krishna, then you have to take the life of devotion, uh, strive, strive the guidance, or under the guidance of a spiritual master. Take, take the life of devotion under the guidance of a spiritual master. Then you can understand Krishna. แล้วในฐานะว่าแล้วเราเนี่ยจะเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับสัจธรรมสูงสุดคริสต์นาได้อย่างไรคําตอบก็คือก็ต่อเมื่อถ้าเกิดว่า
ความรู้ที่เป็นความรับก็คือการที่เรารู้ว่าความจริงเราเนี่ยเป็นเซตหนึ่งเซตส่วนหนึ่งของประมาณ And then the more confidential knowledge is to understand Krishna as the Paramatma that is in the heart of everyone. And then we will see the most confidential knowledge in the in the future, to, which is to understand Krishna as Bhagavan. So the ab the absolute truth is understood in three features: Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. So Brahman is the confidential knowledge. The Paramatma is more confidential, and Bhagavan is the most confidential. Brahman, เป็นถือว่าเป็นความรู้ในระดับที่เป็นความรับที่หนึ่งนะในการรู้ถึงปรมาตมาเนี่ยเป็นความรู้ที่เป็นความลับสูงขึ้นไปอีกและการที่รู้ถึงองค์พระควานเป็นความรู้ที่เป็นความลับสูงสุด So we see in this this statement here at the end of The text, text number 63, Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna. He said, "I have explained to you the knowledge more confidential." He said, "Deliberate on this fully, and then do what you wish to do." So Krishna is telling Arjuna that you decide what you want to do. I'm not telling you what to do. You have to decide what you want to do. Krishna said, "I've given you the knowledge. I've told you all the knowledge. I've told you all this confidential knowledge. Now you have to decide. What are you going to do?" So we also say to you, you know, all of you devotees, what are you going to do? Are you going to surrender to Krishna? Are you going to chant? It's up to every individual. They have to decide for himself what they want to do. Go ahead. Okay, text sixty-four. Because you are my very dear friend, I am speaking to you. My supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. เนื่องจากเธอเป็นสหายที่รักมากข้าจึงตรัสคำสั่งสอนสูงสุดนี้แด่เธอซึ่งเป็นความรู้ที่ลับสุดยอดจงฟังจากข้าเพื่อประโยชน์ของเธอ So Lord Krishna is going to give in the next verse is going to give the most confidential knowledge. Go ahead. Yes, here we have the most confidential knowledge. We have to do four things. We have to always think of Krishna. We have to become Krishna's devotee. And we have to worship Krishna. And we should offer our homage unto Krishna. 
It means we should bow down before Krishna, we should offer our obeisances. And Krishna, Krishna said, if we do this, then we will be sure to go back to him. Krishna said, I promise you, because you are my very dear friend. So this, this, these instructions were given in the ninth chapter also, if you remember at the end of the ninth chapter, the same four things were said by Lord Krishna. Think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your obeisances or offer your homage to me. So this is a very important instruction. It's given twice in the Bhagavad Gita, so we can understand. Very important. It came in the middle, right at the heart of the Bhagavad Gita, and it comes right at the end of the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, go ahead. And here's another instruction. Let's say Krishna said four things to do. So Arjuna is thinking four things, can you just give me one thing to do? So then Krishna said, okay, just do this, just surrender. Krishna said, abandon all variety of religion, just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Oh, little mistake on the slide, Guru Maharaj. Sorry, it's supposed to be 66. Oh, 66, right, not 65. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, we'll have to change that. Yes. Okay. So, what is surrender? What does surrender mean? Surrender means there's sick. you have to accept everything which is good for devotional service. What is good for devotional service? Good for, well, prasadam. You have to accept prasadam. Someone gives you prasadam, you should accept it, you should take it. And also, kirtan. If the devotees are doing kirtan, you should join the kirtan. It's very good for us. And associating with devotees is very good for us. But surrender also means you have to give up the things which are not good for devotional service. What is not good? Meat, fish and eggs are no good. Intoxication, gambling, illicit sex, they are no good. 
แล้วก็การเสพสิ่งเสพติดการแลกการพนาการวัตสุนทางเพศสัมพันธ์สิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่ไม่ดีที่เราควรที่จะยกเลิก We have to control the senses. We have to give up association with non-devotees. If you associate with people who are meat eaters, they will all want you to eat meat. ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยพบปะสมาคมกับบุคคลที่กินเนื้อสัตว์หรือไม่ใช่สาวเนี่ยเขาก็จะส่งเสริมให้เรารับประทานเนื้อสัตว์กับเขา So surrender means taking shelter of Krishna to know that Krishna will protect us สิโลลาเนี่ยนั้นหมายความว่าการที่เราเนี่ยมีความมั่นใจว่าคริสต์เนี่ยจะปกป้องคุ้มครองเราอย่างแน่นอน And we should know also Krishna is taking care of us แต่เราก็ควรรู้อีกด้วยว่าคริสต์เนี่ยทรงดูแลรักษาเราอยู่โอเคก็เหรอ Yeah okay this is a verse about surrender you can see six items of surrender อันนี้เป็นหกอย่างในการอุทิศตนเสียสละ Yeah you can read them in the surrendering process one should accept Things favorable for discharging devotional service, reject things unfavorable, always believe firmly in the Lord's protection, feel exclusively dependent on the mercy of the Lord, have no interest separate from the interest of the Lord, and always feel oneself meek and humble. แต่ว่าอันนี้พูดถึงการซิโลลาบนะคะการซิโลลาบเนี่ยก็จะมีดังต่อไปนี้อันที่หนึ่งคือการยอมรับสิ่งที่มันเอื้อยอํานวยต่อการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้สองคือการปฏิเสธสิ่งที่ไม่เอื้อยอํานวยต่อการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้สามคือการเชื่ออย่างมั่นใจว่าพระเจ้าเนี่ยจะให้ความปกป้องคุ้มครองกับเราแล้วสี่เนี่ยคือการขึ้นอยู่กับพระเมตตาของพระชนาโดยสิทธิเชิงแล้วห้าคือการแล้วก็ไม่มีความสนใจในการที่จะทำกิจกรรมที่ทำให้เราเนี่ยห่างเหินจากพระองค์แล้วก็โอเคก็เหรอเนี่ยโอเคนี่เป็นคำถามของพระพุทธเจ้าที่พูดถึงว่าเกิดขึ้นถ้าคุณเรียนรู้สิ่งนี้แล้วคุณทำให้มันถูกต้องขึ้นถ้าคุณเรียนรู้สิ่งนี้แล้วคุณทำให้มันถูกต้องขึ้นถ้าคุณเรียนรู้สิ่งนี้แล้วคุณทำให้มันถูกต้องขึ้นถ้าคุณเรียนรู้สิ่งนี้แล้วคุณทำให้มันถูกต้องขึ้นถ้าคุณเรียนรู้สิ่งนี้แล้วคุณทำให้มันถูกต้องขึ้นมีการรับประกันว่าสุดท้ายแล้วเขาเนี่ยจะกลับมาหาข้าพระเทศ And Krishna said there's no servant more dear to me than the than this person who is teaching the Bhagavad Gita. แต่พระเจ้าก็ทรงตรัสว่าไม่มีใครเนี่ยจะเป็นที่รักของข้าไปมากกว่าคนที่สอนพระคัมภีร์กีตา So we should all become teachers and teach this message of Bhagavad Gita. แต่เราทุกคนควรที่จะเป็นคุณครูสอนพระคัมภีร์กีตา Especially people who are born in Bharat Varsha. โดยเฉพาะอย่างยิ่งบุคคลที่เกิดที่ Bharat Varsha ก็คือประเทศอินเดีย Because Bharat Varsha means Actually, Bharat Varsha meant the whole world. So, if somebody is born in, if we're born in the we have the human body, and we're born on this planet, Bharat Varsha, it's a great opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness. 
ออถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยได้เกิดเป็นมนุษย์ได้รับร่างมนุษย์แล้วแล้วเราก็ยังได้มีความรู้ตรงนี้ที่ได้เกิดในบารัตวาร์ซาแล้วเนี่ยเราก็ควรที่จะเป็นบุคคลที่สอนเกี่ยวกับความรู้ตรงนี้ Go ahead So Arjuna is confirming to Krishna. He said, "Now I'm ready to do what you say. I'm prepared to act. I accept your teachings, and now I'm going to do what you say." Arjuna said, "My illusion is now gone." Go ahead. Okay, and here's the final verse of the Bhagavad Gita. Sanjay is speaking. You can see Sanjay in the first verse. We have Dhritarashtra speaking, asking Sanjay. Now the last verse, Sanjay is speaking to Dhritarashtra, and he's telling Dhritarashtra. That Krishna and Arjuna are going to win the war. He says, wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, Krishna, the master of all mystics, there'll be four things: there'll be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. Okay, go ahead. So here's Bali Maharaj. This is the story of Lord Vamana Dev. You see the picture on the right. That's one of Krishna's incarnations, Lord Vamana Dev. He came as a young Brahmana boy to take charity from Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj surrendered to Lord Vamana Dev. He gave him three steps of land. So with three, with two steps of land, Bali Maharaj covered the whole universe. So Bali Maharaj came to take back. Bali Maharaj was born in the family of the demons, and they conquered the heavenly planets. So Lord Vamana Dev came to take back the heavenly planets and to give it to the demigods. So Bali Maharaj, เนี่ยเกิดในตระตระกูลของมารแล้วก็เป็นกษัตริย์ที่ครองไปหมดแล้วก็มีพลังอำนาจมากจนพวกเขาเนี่ยได้ครองโลกสวรรค์ด้วยเลยทำให้เราในเวลาไม่มีที่อยู่เลยทำให้But Bali Maharaj surrendered. He surrendered everything. He's the example of somebody who surrendered everything, because Lord Vamana Dev came and he asked him for charity, and he took everything away from him. He took the whole world away from him. He was ruling the whole world. And Lord Vamana Dev came and took everything away from him. Bali Maharaj ne song pen tua yang sawo kong kan silola, maha. Bukawa tonan kwam jing ne kau pen kasat ki kong thang lo yu la keng mag la pop ma pam ke ne Vamana Dev ma la kau kau sang kau ne sang kau ne tan jat kum thang thang lo pai mot kau mai kwam wa Bali Maharaj mai lue la ne. So surrender everything to Krishna is very difficult, but we can at least do hearing and chanting. 
That's the beginning of devotional service. And gradually, one day we will surrender everything to Krishna. Go ahead. Okay. So that's the end. Are there questions? So we have to thank all the devotees who have been coming regularly to follow this chapter by chapter. If you'd like to study it more, then you can go in more detail. We're only giving a very quick summary. We're not going into the verse, into the chapters very deeply. If you want to study it more closely, then you can take part in our Bhakti Shastri course. It's a nice way to under, come to understand all the Bhagavad Gita, to go through it. You have to go through it again and again, you know, just read it one time, it's not enough. There's so much to be learned, so much to be understood. You have to hear it again and again. We want to hear it, actually we can read it our whole life. It's not a waste, it's a bit. The more you read it, then the more you can understand it. And the nature, the nature of transcendental knowledge is that the, the, every time you read it, you get something new. You find something new there. Okay, are there any questions? Shaya? Yes. Sorry. ถามครูมหาราชนะครับว่าเอ่อถ้าการอ่านความเข้าใจตาเนี่ยอย่างอยากเห็นว่าผมฝึกอ่านจากยูทูบอย่างเงี้ยครับแล้วก็ถ้า
it's all the words of Krishna, so it's all important. We, we don't say just read this chapter. We you have to you have to understand it's all spoken by Krishna, so it's all absolute. <laughs> But the middle portion is about bhakti yoga. Chapter 7 to chapter 12 is all more on bhakti yoga. So that section is very important. And some devotees, they will go through the Bhagavad Gita and they will select the important verses because some of the verses are particularly relevant and important and they're good to memorize. So you should, you can pick out maybe a hundred and one hundred and eight of these verses. There are seven hundred verses in the whole Bhagavad Gita. You can pick out about a hundred and hundred and eight and pick out the main verses and memorize them. And then you can use them in teaching and in explaining Bhagavad Gita. การเลือกเป็นสโลกพิเศษพิเศษนะคะออกมามันจะมีสโลกพิเศษพิเศษหรือว่าเน้นๆกันอยู่นะที่สาวจะนําออกมาแล้วก็จําแล้วก็จําท
Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Sri Lampagopal. Pimi Kham Tham, Kham Kham Jai, Nah Ha. Kuh Mern Ka Vatu Prasong, Thang Jit Vinyan, Nya, Lau, Yang Pee Pee Tang Pao, Wa Pee Ya, Jaa Ka Pai Po Long Ka, Shai Mai Ha. Tae, Thang Vatu Prasong, Nai Lang Vatu, Nya, Lau, Thang Kut Wa Lau Tang Vatu Prasong, Wa Lau Jaa Pai, Dern Thang Pai, Chai Shi Vish Kasi, Lau Kwa Thing Lang, Thi Vin Da Wa, Nya, Ha. มันจะถือว่าเป็นการทำ devotional service ในร่างวัตถุในเกี่ยวกับร่างวัตถุหรือเปล่าเข้าใจพี่ไหมถ้าเกิดว่าเรากเกษียณใช่ไหมคะใช่จะเป็นการทำในร่างวัตถุใช่เพราะว่าอย่างสมมติว่าเราทำปฏิบัติ devotional service เหมือนเราเติมทางจิตวิญญาณทุกวันใช่ไหมแต่ถ้าเกิดเราไปทิ้งร่างวินดาวันอ่ะมันเหมือนกับว่าใช้ร่างวัตถุเราไปทิ้งร่างที่วินดาวันมันจะถือว่าเป็น devotional service ไหมอะไรอย่างเงี้ยโอเคค่ะได้ได้ค่ะเข้าใจนะโอเคครับขอบคุณค่ะโอเคค่ะคุณมาราช her question is she have set up the goal of life is to go back home back to Godhead so now she been doing devotional service through her uh, from her mind and her consciousness like that But at the end of her life, she wants to leave her body in Vrindavan. So, uh, by leaving the body in Vrindavan, will that consider to be a devotional service by using her body? You understand? I don't think that's devotional service. Uh -huh. Many people. Many people go to Vrindavan, but they're not devotees. You don't just go to Vrindavan just by buying a ticket. We have to change the heart, change the consciousness. So, you, if you have not practiced devotional service throughout your life, it will be very difficult to go to Vrindavan at the time of death. You say you're practicing devotion in your mind, but the mind is wandering everywhere, so many places. Your mind is not steady, your mind is not fixed, your mind is at a different place every moment. So you have to take up the process seriously. Of course, you're, you're, you're quite serious. You always listen. You come to the classes every time when we have classes. You're always there. That's very good. But you have, you have to go on from there. Don't think you're doing enough. You have to do more. Do you wear a sari? Do you have a sari?
You have to wear the dress of a devotee. You have to look like a devotee. You have to put tea like on your body. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I'm, I feel very sorry of Gopi dress um, about Vedic culture dressing to go in temple and I put the luck always. Do you have a sari? Do you wear sari sometimes? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Good. And you put tea like on? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um Ajanaha. The, 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 thing, the thing is you don't know when you're going to die. That's the problem. So you say you're going to go to Vrindavan to die, but you don't know when you're going to die. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I, I think so. Um, everybody can can decide about about death, but I just wish to leave my body in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Can you explain more about why um, the body need to leave their body in Vindavan? Well, because they're devotees, they're attached to Krishna, and it's easier for them to think of Krishna in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think so. Uh, if I, I have chance to leave my body in Vindavan, um, um, Vindavan is a very wonderful land to engage every... Have you, have you been there? No, not yet, Guru Maharaj. But how do you know? Um, it's my feeling. Ah, and, just your feeling. Yes, yes. Every time then I see everything about Vindavan, about picture, about video, or some devotee friends um, receive Vindavan. Uh, I think I can touch, touch um, about feeling. Then I think if I, if I really visit Vindavan, maybe just very fulfill my my feeling about mercy of Krishna. So I think if if I have shared to leave my body in Vindavan is um, very mercy from Krishna, something like that. Okay, good. Yes. May Krishna um, bless you. May you be successful. May you be able to leave your body in Vrindavan. Thank you for your blessing, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I have some a little question. Um, so about my, my desire about leave my body in Vrindavan. So, um, nowadays, I I um, am very serious about practice in devotional service and growing my bhakti in every single day. So, but um, I always wishing um, from Krishna about if I successful um, in material work, so it can be helping me to travel to Vindavan or leave the body in Vindavan after when I'm old or something like that. Um, can can I wish in Krishna like that? Is good or not? Well, understand? I don't really understand, no? <laughs> okay, 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 good man. I can help on that. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So she was trying, uh, she was saying that sometimes she prayed to Krishna and asking for her uh, material uh, work to be st steady, you know, so that she can plan accordingly that by the end of her life, she can settle down in Vrindavan and she have a chance to leave her body there. But she is asking for her material uh, duty or material work to be uh, good also. So is that... Is that okay to ask for Krishna like that? 
Well, you may ask, I don't know if Krishna will give. Sometimes people see Krishna may give you and then you you become more forgetful about Krishna consciousness. And sometimes Krishna gives and you still say it's not enough, I need more, I need more, I need more. <laughs> never enough, we're never satisfied. So I have to be very careful. Yes, yes, yes. I, I know. I, 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 I'm trying to control about, about, they say about material things. I'm, I'm trying. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm, we will be practice about this. Okay, good. Thank you. Is is I know um, now. I'm trying to be surrender all of my life in Krishna hand. So it depends on him. Everything in my life. Okay, good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your blessing and very wonderful class. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yogita has a question. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Please accept my blessings, please, Gurudev. All gods of Shukla Prabhupada, you, Gurudev, and Baranga Chai. Gurudev, uh, this is a question. Um, some newcomers to the temple have asked. Like in today's time, everyone is a shudra, but in the text 48, the Lord says, one should not give up the work born of his nature, and one should not give it up even if it's full of fault. But Gurudev being a Shudra in today's time, each person born does work of his interest, not of their nature, because one doesn't even know what is really the nature. So what is the work that they're supposed to do? Especially when they're not even interested yet, they say, in chanting or adopting to devotional life. How do we answer them, Gurudev? เพราะฉะนั้นคําถามของมาตรีนะคะก็ถามว่าบุคคลเนี่ยบอกว่าเอ่อเวลาเค้าบอกว่าตามปกติแล้วเนี่ยเค้าจะทําทําตามหน้า
And yet they, they have to be told what to do. Nobody, they won't work. They don't have any initiative of their own to know what to do. So they, they have to be told what to do. So if we tell them to chant, they don't want to do it. If we tell them to read the Bhagavad Gita, they don't want to do it, they don't want to hear the Bhagavad Gita. They want to watch Bollywood movies, they'll watch Bollywood movies for hours and hours. They'll watch all kinds of stupid people singing and dancing. But we tell them, come and sing and dance with us and chant Hare Krishna. Oh no, no, I don't want to do that. They say, that's no good. But they'll sit and watch other people sing and dance, mundane music, mundane song, lusty women and lusty men. And you ask them, come and sing, sing and dance for Krishna, dance in the temple. Oh no, no, I don't want to do that. So Kutip, should I just tell them, just chant one round, allow the Lord to, you know, enter your life and guide you in terms of what you're good at and what you should do? Yeah. Can, you, should I answer that? Yeah, you can try. Yeah, good. Hmm. Because I'm just trying to think how to answer them, connecting, you know, to the to serving their lordship, yeah. so that they will be more. They would want to chant. Okay. At least. Yeah. Good. Yeah. If you ask. Okay. Them, they might do it. Okay. Great. Great. Then. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna definitely keep on saying something on those terms now. Okay. Good. Thank you. Great. Then. Okay, so we're, we're going to have Krishna book tomorrow night. We'll continue with the Krishna book on Wednesday. Yes, yes Guru Maharaj. There is one question remaining, Guru Maharaj, from Raja Surya Prabhu. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, thank you very much for a good class. And you have been patiently explaining us, teaching us from chapter 1 to chapter 18. So uh, I, from here we learn a lot and also I think for especially a uh, person who is attending a Bhakti Sasri class also, they get a lot of point again. So it will help us for exam or something like that, also for preaching. So Guru Maharaj, my understanding is that uh, after Studying this Bhagavad Gita, uh, at the end, uh, we should become a devotee of Krishna and we should preach about this so that we can become more dear to Krishna. So my question is, even though we know that, yes, we should become, we should become a very serious devotee and we should preach, but uh, we, uh, I just want to know the, how to become more serious in devotional service, how can we... Uh, you know, more serious. I think when we become more serious, then we can preach more. But right now, even though we are doing some preaching, but it's not really uh, affecting or you know, it's kind of something is lacking. So, can you please uh, tell how to become more serious in Bhakti? Well, I think if you're preaching, it must be that is serious. That's you know, to preach, you have to be serious. That is serious, being serious. You, like I said, what you do, you have to, you have to be regular. You have to be steady. You study the Bhagavad Gita like we did. We would do it every day, every night. We'd have a class on the Bhagavad Gita every night, one verse. So if you're very regular, then then people see you're very serious, very convinced. They'll take you seriously. No. 
จริงนะคะก็บอกว่าเราเนี่ยจะมีความจริงจังในการปฏิบัติได้มากขึ้นอย่างไรนะคะบางทีเนี่ยเรารู้สึกว่าการเผยแพร่ที่เราทําอยู่มันไม่ค่อยอส่งผลได้ดีมากนักอะไรอย่างเงี้ยเราควรที่จะทำยังไงดีเสร็จแล้วโปรจีก็บอกว่าบุญมาเราก็บอกว่าเราต้องมีความถ้าเกิดว่าเรามีการเผยแพร่อยู่เนี่ยอันนี้ก็ดีแล้วแล้วเราสิ่งที่เราควรทําก็คือควรมีการอ่านเกี่ยวกับหนังสือบทกิตาอะไรเงี้ยเป็นประจําสม่ำเสมอเราต้องมีความสม่ำเสมอ Krishna consciousness is in everyone Krishna is in everyone's heart so Krishna consciousness is in everyone's heart It has to be awakened by hearing, but they have to hear. They have to hear regularly. Have to be reminded. We have to hear again and again and again, and gradually it starts to make sense. And we put it all together. We become convinced. <laughs> You get some people. They say, "Oh, chanting Hari Krishna. Is there any other way? No, there's no other way. You have to chant Hari Krishna. You have to chant the holy name. In Kali Yuga, there's no other way. In other ages, there were other ways, but in Kali Yuga, there's no other way." สำหรับในกาลยุกแล้วนะคะมันไม่มีหนทางอื่นใดนอกจากการสบภาวนาฮาริกิชนามะฮะ So we have to chant and we have to convince other people also to chant. So kirtan is very important. Regular kirtan. People like kirtan when they hear the holy name. And then they want to come and join the kirtan. They feel good. แล้วการทำกีรตันเนี่ยเออก็เวลาผู้คนได้ยินตรงนี้เนี่ยมันก็จะดีมากแล้วเขาจะสามารถรู้สึกถึงความสุขได้ So kirtan and prasadam these two things simple prasadam doesn't have to be very opulent but just something some little piece of fruit or whatever but something offered to Krishna and we distribute it of course we are having this virtual Program. I I don't have the opportunity to give you all prasada. I feel very sorry. I cannot distribute prasada to all of you. Every every time we have class, we should have prasada. But how to do it? <laughs> cannot. So when we meet, I will certainly have to give you all prasada. <laughs> I think this class, the the class you're giving is also it's a it's, a, it's a, another form of prasadam. <laughs> okay. So, is is that a question coming from uh, Sri Devi? Yes, Guru m a h a Yes, Sri Devi. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada. All glories to you, Sri La Guru Maharaj. My my, my question, my I I've, I've got two questions. Okay, the first one is, uh, Sri La Guru Maharaj, please give some advice on what is the best sequence of starting the morning. a r a d i followed by the chanting, or chanting followed by a r a d i for Vana p r a s h t a people in retirement. And the second one is, I've been preaching to a friend one on one. Uh, she's receptive to, to what I'm telling her, but now she's telling me that her granddaughter is born, so she's not ready for a devotional life. So what should I? How should I respond to to what she said? Well, <laughs> you know, sometimes you know some people are just they just don't want devotional service. I think the lady who said because her granddaughter is born, she doesn't want devotional life. She's not interested to be a devotee, so oh. you can just understand she's not interested in devotional service. Better you find somebody else to preach to. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And then about your arti, do we do yes. chan chanting first or arti? 
the main thing is that the time of your arti should be regular. So you decide what time you're going to do arti. And if, and if you're up before that, then you can chant before the arti, you can chant. And if you're, you know, or, or maybe you get up just in time for the arti. I don't know, it's up to you, you know. Depends what time you wake up. If you're up early before the arti, you can chant first. If you're not up, if you get up and then it's time for arti, then you do arti. And after arti, then you chant. Okay. It's not important. Guru Maharaj, when I'm doing kirtan, I'm alone. I'm the only one in my puja room doing the kirtan. <laughs> one with one single devotee. When I say all God is to be assembled devotee, sometimes I want to cry. Tears come down my eyes because I'm the only devotee saying all God is to be assembled devotees. Oh, all is to be oh no, you, you shouldn't think you're alone, you know. All the parampara are there with you. When you say all glories to the assembled devotees, all the acharyas are there. Narada Muni is there, Lord Brahma is there, they're all there. They're all in the parampara. So when you're worshipping Krishna and glorifying Krishna, they all come. So don't think you're alone. They're all there with you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. You're never alone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we will stop here now. Thank you, Archana, so much for all your services. Thank translation. You. And thank also who is doing Nepali translation tonight. Saki Harini Mataji. Saki Harini Mataji. Thank you very much for your services. And we'll see you all tomorrow night for Krishna book. Yes, Guru Right, Srila and, yeah. huh? and I would like to thank you on behalf of every devotees here. We are very fortunate and grateful that we get your association through Zoom nice. for the uh, 19 or 20 days, I think. <laughs> so thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you. Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Go back to Vrinda ki.